All right, here it is, the long-awaited DJM 900 Nexus 2, the successor to the DJM 900 Nexus. I placed my order for this one about a month ago, and I have been waiting for this day so that we could tear it open and play around with it a little bit and see what all the fuss is about. In this video, I'm just going to be unboxing the unit and kind of giving you a look at what is inside. Uh, and in future videos, I'm going to be doing a whole tutorial series about all the features of this awesome new mixer. And as we open it up here, we see we have our standard IEC to Edison power cable. Uh, it's that kind of medium gray colored cable. I actually really kind of like it. And in the other side of the styrofoam here, our USB A to B cable. That's for connecting to a computer. And our styrofoam is marked with little indented F and R for front and rear. So the crossfader side is on the front side and the input output section is on the rear. So let's go ahead and take it out. Pretty standard pioneered method of shipping all their stuff for probably about eight years now, if not more. And of course, in the bottom of the box, um, we've got, well, let's take a look here. We have their little uh, advertisement. They're begging and pleading, please use Kuvo. We promise it'll be cool. If everyone just uses it, please just sign up and download our app. Uh, but nobody really does that. And then of course the, uh, the full uh, user manual, which actually is a lot thinner. This can't be the full user manual. This is just a quick start guide. So they no longer include a full user manual. Uh, I guess you have to get that online. Or just subscribe to my channel and uh, I'll show you how all the features on this unit work. All right, here we go. Break the tape. And uncover. Wow, look at that. That's beautiful. And to be honest, it's uh, kind of interesting just looking at this for the first time in person. Um, it seems more imposing than the 900 Nexus does. And what I mean by that is it just feels like certain sections are chunkier, everything pops out a little more. Um, the matte black surface is really cool. It just feels like, uh, just by looking at it, it feels a little more refined. I, I, I can't quite put my finger on it, but even when it's powered off, it, it definitely feels, um, feels like a whole new generation of mixer. So I'm sure you guys already know the basic talking points about this mixer, um, but it does have a couple of cool things that I just want to gloss over real quick. Um, there's a new send return feature that allows you to uh, connect an effects unit via USB, um, and that has its own independent level control, whereas in the 900 you had to choose send return in your uh, effects selector knob here. And that means that you could only have the option of either just doing the center return or just the beat effects, which uh, not the best compromise to make in my opinion. Probably the biggest uh, new update is the two USB sound cards, so that makes swapping over DJs super easy. They've also changed the crossfader completely. Um, it's not an innovator like uh, in some other manufacturers. It is instead their proprietary Magvel fader. So um, I'm actually going to be tearing this unit completely apart in a later video and we'll take a look and see exactly what the construction like is on the inside for this guy. I mean, other than that, it's pretty business as usual. Um, I'm gonna power it on real quick and just so we can uh, get a glimpse of what it looks like with it all lit up. All right, so we got our power connected and uh, we'll go ahead and for the first time, turn on the 900 Nexus 2. Cool little LCD screen, a lot more high resolution than the dot matrix display on the previous. 900. So here's one thing that I've noticed straight away. I turned the lights off so that we could get a better glimpse of what the LED color scheme looks like. And the, uh, the level meters, as you tilt back, and this is not just a camera trick, this is actually how it looks like when you just change your perspective when you're looking at the mixer. The, uh, the level meters, uh, they have like a shroud around them, and it wasn't like this in the, the original 900. Um, it's more like these have a tunnel guide right above the, the, LED, um, the LEDs on the inside to indicate the level. So I guess that means that it's, I, I think this is maybe intentional, but I'm not quite sure. 
However, I don't know, this might not actually affect it too much in the club, um, but it, it does kind of seem that you have to be looking straight down on it to, to make it the brightest possible. And as we look a little closer at the beat effects section on this new screen, which I absolutely love, this is so much better than the dot matrix on the 900. Um, there is, uh, on this pad, you can see how much resolution you have, um, kind of like how the, the old 900 showed you, but it actually shows you, uh, unlike the 900, what the parameter is that you're affecting. Um, so it's, it's a lot different than just the linear line that would, uh, that's a little redundant, but the, the line that would show you from left to right, uh, what was being affected. It wouldn't show you what the parameter was that was being affected. It, you just kind of have to figure it out on your own. Uh, whereas this actually shows you on the screen, okay, I'm affecting the pitch of the helix effect. And as you rotate it here, you can see it changes with whatever type of effect I'm on. So um, if I am on uh, a beat type effect, it'll change this little strip from, uh, it, it'll, so if I'm on a beat effect, it'll light up all of the individual squares. So to indicate that, you know, I can control the, the beats with, by pressing that part on the X pad. But if I switch to uh, an effect that is not dependent on BPM, it changes to this, um, it lights up this middle strip. And it looks like you can still, no matter where you press on here, it'll light up regardless, but it no longer has the second row. It's just one big strip instead of two rows. And I believe they made it this, this way because previously you couldn't really see which number you were hitting um, on the X pad. So that's cool. I love that. And of course, probably the biggest, uh, the biggest improvement I think in this effects engine is the ability to choose which frequencies are affected by the beat effects section. It's not quite as uh, involved as the DJM 2000 and DJM 2000 Nexus where you have individual volume control um, over each low, mid, and high segment. But this is uh, much smoother, I think, and it'll be a lot easier to use because people are scared of the DJM 2000, let's be real, and this uh, is probably going to be uh, a really, really uh, major key to success. And one other thing I wanted to point out, the, the master volume knob is a lot shorter than the DJM 900. And since I've been comparing the 900 Nexus 2 to its older brother, the 900 Nexus, which incidentally, this exact mixer was my very first Pioneer mixer. Um, I bought it when I was in high school and I was throwing high school dances. Um, but even though this is still the workhorse and it'll probably uh, be the workhorse in clubs for, I would say at least the next six to seven years, uh, just looking at these side by side, you can see there is definitely some evolution that is going on here. And I'm excited to put some time in behind the 900 Nexus 2 um, and see what it has to offer. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and check out the other videos on my channel. I upload all sorts of DJing and event industry videos, uh, behind the scenes stuff all sorts of things that you might be interested in, so make sure to check it out. Also, if you go ahead and click on the annotation on the screen, it'll take you to my unboxing and first impressions of the CDJ2000 Nexus 2. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching.